नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत सबोदस नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत सबोदस नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत सबोदस ऑन टू हिम द ब्लेसड वन द वर्दी वन द ट्रूली एनलाइटन वन माई अटमोस्ट रिस्पेक्ट टू द परफेक्टली एनलाइटन समा संबुद्ध द नोबल डॉक्ट्रीन ऑफ द बुद्ध एंड द नोबल महासंग द डिसाइपल्स ऑफ द बुद्ध हेलो डियर धाम फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू वीक फोर्टीन ऑफ अ स्पेशल धाम टॉक सीरीज विद वेनरेबल तिखा वंसा लंकार असिस्टेंट लेक्चर एट द शान स्टेट बुद्धिस्ट यूनिवर्सिटी इन म्यांमार प्लीज मार्क योर कैलेंडर एवरी संडे एट सेवन थर्टी एम पैसिफिक टाइम टेन थर्टी एम ईस्टर्न टाइम एंड एट पी एम श्रीलंका एंड इंडियन स्टैंडर्ड टाइम टू गेट बेनिफिटेड मोर kindly check with dhamma usa youtube channel and facebook pages for more updates today's topic is five precepts and happy home kindly post your questions in the comment sections of our youtube channels so that we can answer them at the end of the talk without further delay let me invite venerable tikha vamsa lankara to start his dhamma sharing on five precepts and happy home sadhu 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 thank you very much for your introduction madam before we are going to start the dhamma talk let's pay homage to the buddha I say in Namotasa three times. Namotasa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambodasa. Namotasa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambodasa. Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambodasa. I pay homage to the Blessed One, the Worthy One, and the Perfectly Enlightened One. Oh dear, dear my friends. Good evening from Myanmar. Firstly, I would like to thank the Dharma USA organization for inviting me to give the Dharma talk. Today, I'm going to give a Dharma talk for the time being. Five reserves and happy home. From my topic, you will notice, you will see the two parts. The first part is five precepts, which means in Sasila in Pali. You already know that. The second part is a happy home. I want to share my view of the five precepts and how to create happy home by practicing five precepts by practicing in sasila from my talk I will contribute or how to live in a family how to handle the problem within our families most families and institution or our society are not in harmony and people are also suffering people of the suffering 
as you know, many Buddhists are having problems, although they observe the five precepts. You know this, especially our countries, Myanmar, and your country as well. Even though they observe, they observe the pipe recess. We observe the pipe recess. We are having problems. The Buddhists, they are blaming each other. They are fighting each other, distributing each other. And they are killing each other. We get hurt very often. I also hurt very often that both these countries are facing problems. Many complex fighting each other, even though they observe the five places. So, we should investigate. We should investigate that. To what extent Buddhists, the Buddhists observe the five places? We should investigate. To what extent Buddhists observe the five places and Oh, we Buddhists observe the five precepts. We should investigate that. We should investigate the kind of situation. The Buddha taught very clearly. If we observe the five precepts, we could be happy in this life and next life. Then it enabled to attain Nirvana as well. As. It is clearly stated in many Buddhist discourses. So we should find the reasons why Buddhists who observe the high precepts are facing the problems. They are fighting each other and harming each other and blaming each other. Why do Buddhist families or countries, why Buddhist countries or families kind of find the happiness? Why they are having dispute? Why they complex? Even though they are observing the five pieces in daily life. Even though they are observing the five pieces, they are blaming each other, harming each other, and killing each other. We should find the solution. So today I, I would like to find the kind of this solution. How to handle in our Buddhist families, Buddhist countries, based on the five precepts. So I would like to talk today, Thomas. You know, I would like to share the five precepts from my opinion. So you all know that there are five precepts called Pensasila. 
a man, the five breezes. The first breeze is Panaripada Sikhabra. We assume that most of us think that if we do not kill any living beings, if we do not kill any living beings, we do not transgress or we do not break the first precepts, first sealers. Therefore, we think that we observe the first sealers completely. If we do not kill any living beings, we think that we are keeping the five precepts. In general, it is correct. It is not denied. We do not break the rules. We do not break the precepts. Yeah, we do not kill living beings. However, we do not kill any living beings. If we have hatred or if we have anger toward other living beings, this kind of abstraining is not perfect. It means that our sila is not completely to the point. Even though we do not kill any living beings, we have hatred, we are angry toward other living beings. If so, our sila is not completely to the point. That is why just abstaining from killing living beings is not purpose, observing the first precepts. So we still need to avoid being hatred, angry, or aggressive toward other people to observe the five past precepts completely. Here, the message I would like to give you is that we need not only to abstain from killing others, but also to have to have others long life and happy life. So it means that we should not stop the kind of divinations by not killing other living beings. Then we should take care of their lives and we should make them happy. I want to say another definition, another meaning is not to harm other, not to torture other. They are also included in the first places. We should not torture other people verbally or physically. Verbally or physically. If we do not kill any other living beings, if we are still having other people verbally or physically, it means that we are not completely observing the first precept, not properly observing the first sila. That is why we should bear in mind that we should not torture other people physically or verbally. This is the message what I would like to convey regarding the first pieces for the Another thing that 
what I want to tell you is that when we are living in a family or in a society or in a, a institution, we should live not harming other people, not torturing other people. In this regard, I would like to describe, I would like to show the story of 500 monks, or we can say that, that the story of Karenia Metasoda or Metasoda in the Tamabara commentary. Some of you may have already known this story. When the Buddha was living in Sawati, the 500 monks went to the Buddha, approached to the Buddha and learned the meditation method from the, from the Buddha. Then they went to the forest and practiced the meditation. When they are living and meditating in the forest, the deities or the celestial beings or devas gonna stay above the trees. So they went down and they have to live on the ground. And they waited for, for the time when the monks left. But monks did not leave. So the deities gonna bear it anymore and they make they made threats. They made it threats to those vehicles. Such as showing the body without the head, showing the head without the body and shouting or screaming and so on. Finally, Max could not stay there anymore. And they went, they went back to the Buddhas and they reported everything what they had experienced. So the Buddha taught the Grania Madasoda, which is about the loving kindness to those deities. After receiving the, the, the teachings from the Buddha, the monk went back to the forest and they spoke the loving kindness to those deities. After the, the deities began plenty with those monks and look after them. And the man could meditate very well and they attain spiritual achievement individually. So this is a brief of this story occurring the Kralia Madasota. Based on this story, what I would like to give you a message is that no matter how we do a very good thing, no matter how we do very good thing, sometimes we are harming others and knowing and expectedly. I would like to say again. Okay, no matter, based on these stories, I wanted to say this message to you. I wanted to give this message to you, based on these stories. No matter how we do a very good thing, sometimes we are harming others and no one. That is why 
Where do we care for? That our success also harms others sometimes. Look at these stories. Even though the monks are doing kusala, usan, deeds, the deities were suffering. Even though the monks are doing kusala, the deities were suffering. On the other hand, they were tortured, they were discomfort, because the man stayed at their place. So we should bear in mind that whatever we do very good there, whatever we do very good then, other people or enemies might be discomfort, might be harmed or tortured, we should consider this kind of situation. In theory, the monks are keeping the pipe breezes. Do not kill any other living beings. However, in practice, the Asila is not completely purified. That is my opinion based on this story. Whatever we do, very good to them. And normally, we are harming others. We are torturing others. Similarly, in our families, we are doing good things, but other family members may be discomfort, may be harmed because of our behavior. The intention of first priest is not to harm others and to perform goodness of others. If we are taking care of ourselves and others in a family, we can create a happy home. If we are taking care of others or ourselves, we can create a happy home. Then I want to move to the second process. The, the second precept is, you already know this, Adena Dana Sekhavaras. As you all know, the definition of this precept is not to seize something where it's not given by the owner, by the others. Here also we think that if we do not seize others' belongings, it is enough to observe the hypothesis. It is enough to, to observe the hypothesis if we do not steal other belongings. We assume that we should not stop that kind of definition, that kind of concept. We should go further definitions. In practice, it is necessary not to not only abstain from the stealing other belongings, but also to share our belonging with the others as well. Not only steal other belongings, but also we should share our belongings to other people. This is the message of the second pieces. And I would like to des describe another way of feeling in the families or in our society, in our institution. 
suppose we have duties or obligations in our families. If someone does not do his or her duties or obligations very well, another member has to do extra work and has to make an effort for that person. In this case, the person who does not do his duty or obligation is a kind of steed. The times or the energy of others. The person who does not do his or her duties obligations, it is also a kind of stealing the times or energy of others, other family members. Another way of stealing, I would like to tell you. Another way of stealing is the taking position that one does not deserve. It is happening in our society very often. They also break in the second process, but we do not wait on that. For example, by giving another money, one takes positions that does not deserve, not officially given not officially given. By giving the undeliver money, one takes the position. This is also a kind of feeling. But we do not aware of that. That is why taking position is stealing other positions or destroying others' happiness as well. This kind of stealing is happening very often in our society. We have to be very careful not to steal, not to steal the other positions of happiness. In this process, the message what I want, what I would like to convey you is that it is not sufficient to abstain from stealing other belongings. It is not sufficient to abstain from stealing others, but we still need to take care of others. Then please bear in mind that not doing our duties or our obligations is also stealing the times and energy of others and taking position also. Taking position that is not given officially is also breaking the second precept. We should bear in mind that it may be enough for the second precept. I would like to continue to the, that precept. That precept is, you already know that, Kamesu Mesa Salas. We normally assume that the meaning of this precept is abstaining from sensual misconduct. Abstaining from misconduct concerning sense pleasures. We already know that. We already understood that this means. I want to go further with this definition. I want to extend, I want to enlarge these definitions. As you know, the word karma, the word karma refers to the sense pleasures or pleasurable experience, which enjoy the beautiful form, good song, good smell, good taste, and attractive 
tangible objects. These are related to related to the word karma. These are the high kind of sensual pleasures. Empali in karma guna. The word Mesamsara refers to the application of high sensual pleasures wrongly. Or we can say that wrongly or falsely applied in the five sensual pleasures. For example, if we watch movies too much, if we play game too much, if we attach using Facebook too much, these are also included in the Kamisu Mesasara. That is what I want to do. Translate. The, these kind of enjoyment can cause us a healthy body and mind. Then our enjoyment can harm us and cause suffering as well. It can also destroy our opportunity or potentialities to do good deeds or kusla. For example, I would like to describe the King Kosala about the case, the story of King Kosala. Some of you may have known the story. You, you, as you know, King Kosala was very close to the Buddha. But he was enjoined eating too much. He was enjoined eating too much. And he was a great eater. So he could not attain any spiritual attainment because he could not absorb what the Buddha taught. He could not absorb what the Buddha taught because he eat too much. He enjoyed eating a lot. Craving, craving to what eating or enjoying your food too much destroying our potentialities or opportunities to be able to realize the Dharma. What I said this story, about this story, I would like to draw attention that Kamesu Mesasara depart too much enjoyment of the five sensual pleasures. Kamizu Mesasara referred too much enjoy enjoyment of the five sensual pleasures. If we cannot control our mind or if we cannot abstain from those kind of sensual pleasures, our body and mind will be harmed and our pinus will be declined as well. Another thing, what I would like to say is that we want to eat some of the very delicious food and we want to wear very experienced, very expensive clothes and we want to use brand new phone or brand new car and so on. Then we buy them, although they are not essentials. We buy them without necessary. This is a kind of waste of money. We cannot control our mind and enjoy in such a pleasures. Our mind and many are wrongly utilized for our sensual pleasures. This is also a kind of karmism misasara. 
by wasting our energy and finance wrongly as a consequence. We cannot possess happy family and happy home. So we should be careful about this kind of small thing as well. These are also included coming Mesa Sara. We should go part the the kind of interpretation as well. Then fourth precept is Musawara Sekabra. You already know this. The literal meaning of this precept is abstaining from telling lying. Abstaining from lying. Abstaining from incorrect speech. In theory, it is caught. In practice, it is not enough just to abstain from telling lying. Just to abstain from telling lying is not enough. Dealing with this reasons. We should be careful in talking to others without harming or insulting. For example, in the families, when the parents praise their sons or daughters, who is clever, who is successful, on the other side, the daughters or the sons, who is not clever, who is not success, they feel sad, they feel imperial, and they got impatient. Actually, we are doing good things correctly. We praise the son or daughter who, who is clever. With full success, nothing wrong. But the other side, the other son or daughter who is not clever or success, they feel sad, they feel imperial, they call depressions. So, in this case, parents have to be careful when they would like to praise the son or daughters for his or her success. Teachers also. Sometimes you know you may know that you may you have you may see that teachers you know, praise the students who is clever who is very clever. You consider, you should consider the other side, the other students, who is not clever, who is not students. They feel that, they feel inferior. That's why. The praising of the teacher is nothing wrong. It is correct, it's right. We assume it like that. But we should look at other side. Other students, who is not clever, who is not success. They feel sad, they got depression. We should consider that kind of situation. So when we are talking, or when we are praising, we should bear in mind that the other side, the other person, are harmed or tortured the god of depression as well. The similar case, what I would like to draw attention, attention, draw attention to this in our society. For example, I would like to describe the story of Ingolimala. You already know that. He was praised by his professors because he was a cleverless among the students. He was cleverless among the students. So some students became jealous. Some students who is not clever, who is not success, they feel sad. 
we can see we can see clearly the stories, but we do not wear that. Then you know the student make a travel to him. Finally, a good man became big murderer. Sometimes we we assume this, we, we consider this. The other students very bad. They are, they are jealous with Ingulimala. In my opinion, I don't want to blame the other students. I want to blame the teachers, the professors. Who does not consider the other students? Who does not take care of other students? Emotion. Other students' emotions are very sad and they feel sad, they feel inferior, they got depression. That is why they travel to Inkulimana. So we should bear in mind this as a professor, as a teacher as well. In this case, we need to learn the teachers should be very careful when they would like to praise the clever students and the teachers need to consider the other students who are not clever enough. Then I would like to add another story Please follow me, you may already know that. Very well known stories. When the Buddha was dwelling in Sawati, one lady called Kisa Kormi. Her son died and she was looking for the medicine that could bring her son's life. Her entire life is dependent on her son. So to get the medicine, he was to get the medicine was very important for her. That is why she was seeking the medicine for her son. Then he asked the people to get the medicine. The people replied to her. But matter is not possible to bring back your son's life. But one person said to her that to go and ask the Buddha. The Buddha may know the medicines. So she went to the Buddha and asked, Do you know the medicine for my dead son? Do you know the medicine for my dead son? The Buddha replied to her, yes, I do. Uh, you, we should consider that. If the Buddha replied to her straightforward, as no, it's not possible. If the Buddha replied to her like that, she would be completely mad in this case, in this place, or she was dying in this place. Here we can notice that the Buddha was very skilled in talking, treating a mental patient. So she told us carefully and saved her life. So we should bear in mind that when we talk to someone at home, we should be very careful that our talking should not harm others, even though our speech is truth. Even though our speech is truth, we should be careful when we are talking. If we talk any way that our home will be happy, we can create happy home by observing the princess completely. This is the message dealing with the Musawara Sai
the pet princess is Suramila Yasekabra. One should not drink alcohol. You or, we already know that. You should try drinking alcohol, taking drugs, become a headache. As a consequence, it can cause a healthy mind and body. If our mind and body are not healthy, you imagine that we are unable to survive. We are not able to stand ourselves and we are not able to take care of our families or society as well. For the goodness of our families and society, we should not drink alcohol. We should not use drugs. Based on such commercial in mind, we should abstain from drinking alcohol, taking drugs. I don't want to talk too much dealing with this process. So I will, conclu I will conclude by talking. The intention of high priest is not to harm others. The intention of high priest is not to harm others. When we live in families, the high priest is a norm of well-behaved person, a criteria of well-behaved persons. Observing pipe precept means that we can give a guarantee that we do not harm others, we do not torture other beings. If the one is very harmonious and behave well in the families or in the society, in our society, in our institution, everybody loves or uh, everybody likes him. That is the benefit of abstaining, observing the high priestess and building the happy home, happy societies. Another important message I would like to give you is that if the one observes the high priestess with the loving kindness metta, with the compassion, karuna, the kind of observation, observation is not strong enough. Without loving kindness and without compassion, if we observe the five places, the kind of sila is not strong enough. And it is easy to be broken. Then without loving kindness, without metta and karuna, the observing of high breezer is not meaningful. It may not be completely to the point. So I'm going to say that if we develop or if we cultivate the loving kindness and conversion, we already observe the high breezes. And it sport high breezes completely. If we have loving kindness and compassion, we will not harm others. We will not torture other people. We can live happily. We can also observe the five precepts more easily. Then we can be happy at home, in a society. We can be happy in this life and next life. Finally, it can even lead to the highest spiritual attainment, Nibbana, where well, let me end my Dhamma talk here, and I hope you, I hope you will get some knowledge from my talk. I wish you all to be happy, healthy. Uh, peaceful your daily life. Thank you so much. For what do Sabha mingle? Thank you so very much. For what do Sabha mingle? Raka no Sabha di wada Sabha boda nuwa we na sadasuki pawan today.
Thank you so very much, Venerable Tekkabam Salankara, for this profound speech on Five Precepts and Happy Home. I'm sure all our Dhamma friends around the world were benefited today. We will take up your questions now and we encourage you to post your questions in simple language through the Dhamma USA and YouTube channels. Uh, Sayadaw, there is one question. It is from Dhamma friend Valentine Venus. The question is, what is the meaningful life? What should I do to get a meaningful life? Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. As I mentioned in my talk, you know, if we have, you know, if we cultivate, if we develop the loving kindness and compassion, we already observe the five precepts. There is a meaningful life. To observe five precepts, we should cultivate metta and karuna. Then your life will be meaningful. I believe that. Maybe you will be satisfied with my answers. To follow the five precepts as you have taught us today. Uh, there is another question, Bhandiji. It's uh, my personal question. Currently, we are in Vasa. So as a Puthujan, as lay people, how should we observe Vasa? Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. As a, as a lima or as a monk? Can you, can you say again, please, madam? Uh, as a lay person, as a layman, how should we observe Vasa? Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Uh, I, I do not find that kind of observe, observing was was a, I all, I just know that for the monks, you know, observing the way was a, not for the lay person. Sadhu, uh, sadhu, sadhu. Thank you, Pantaji. Um, I do not find any other question. So with that, we conclude today's Dhamma sharing. And uh, look forward to meeting you with more insightful Dhamma sharings in the coming weeks. Let's keep our palms together, close to our hearts, and pay respect, uh, respect to Venerable Sayadaw with three sadhus. May you always be well, happy, and healthy, dear Venerable. Sabbi tiyo vivajjantu, sab rogo vinasatu, mate bhavat vantarayo, sukhi digayu ko bhava. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. See you again next week at the same time. Good night and Peruvan Saranai. Good night. Thank you so much. <laughs>